So now we're going to talk about one of the core concepts in information theory, that is Shannon entropy. So we're first going to talk a bit about uh, the history, which shows that yeah, Shannon entropy is the, the foundation of information theory, although today there are various other uh, entropies that are also used in information theory. Uh, but this is the basic one that we, we will use and uh, illustrate with a few examples. So we'll start with the history, then continue with the definition, and then a few properties, uh, and then we'll introduce conditional entropy, and finally we will uh, cover information gain. Yeah. Now, uh, Shannon entropy was basically created in 1948 by Claude Shannon uh, when he published a paper titled A Mathematical Theory of Communication. So he starts using the term entropy as a measure for information. Uh, this The reason he chose uh, the, the term entropy is probably because it's there are related uh, terms in physics where entropy measures the disorder of molecules and basically Shannon's concept of entropy me measures the disorder in information. And the purpose of his theory as his, the title of his paper implies was to analyze communication because he wanted to know what were the theoretical limits for different channels over which you can communicate and how much redundancy is needed uh, for certain levels of noise in these channels. And by channel we mean like the, the wireless channel that your, your wireless uh, network is using or the cable that your cabled network is using. Uh, and back in his days uh, it was the telephony system uh, that was used for, for communication. Now this theory, as I said, is interesting on the physical layer of networking, uh, because that's what it was developed for, so how to construct protocols uh, to, to form signals uh, over the, this uh, network, over the physical layer. So cables or, or air, these signals must be, I mean, this data that we want to send must be converted to electromagnetic waves or electromagnetic uh, or electric signals in the case of cables. But it's also applicable in a lot of different uh, areas. And it's particularly interesting for security. Uh, we have an entire field uh, called information theoretic security, which uh, uses this uh, as at its foundations. Uh, we also can measure the efficiency of uh, different password policies uh, because we can use entropy or Shannon entropy as a measure for how predictable uh, the passwords that the users choose, uh, how predictable they are. We can also measure things like identifiability to reason about anonymity and uh, how easy it is to, to track people. And so Shannon entropy uh, is defined as follows. So we, we have a stochastic variable uh, x, which assumes uh, values from some set x. Then we can define Shannon entropy as usually denoted the, the function edge of the stochastic variable x here. Uh, we define it as this uh, sum. So basically, what we have here is we have a constant factor k here. Uh, that one is usually chosen to be one through the logarithm of two. And this basically controls which unit uh, we get. And most, uh, most often we are interested in giving it in, in uh, bits. Uh, so usually this one is uh, one through the logarithm of two. Uh, now, uh, 
it's the sum uh, over a lot of probabilities. So basically this is the probability that uh, the stochastic variable x takes the value uh, small x, which is an element in the set x here. So uh, for each possible output uh, of this variable, uh, we sum up the probability that that happens multiplied by the logarithm, uh, the logarithm of that probability happening. And we will see why, why this gives uh, interesting properties. Yeah. Now, Shannon entropy uh, can be seen as a lot of things. So for instance, it can be seen as how much choice there is in an event uh, and the uncertainty of the event, both of these are equivalent, they, it's just different formulation, uh, or how, much, uh, how many bits we need to store each event, or how much information it produces. So these two are very much also equivalent. Now, if we look at an example, that would make uh, understanding this much easier. So we have this uh, stochastic variable S. So we want to toss a coin. And uh, well, the possible outputs are heads or tails. So there are two sides of the coin. Uh, so either one or the other side uh, comes up when we, when we toss the coin. And uh, as we usually assume when we toss a coin, the probability of each side occurring is uh, equal to half. It's 50-50 uh, chance for each side. So that's what we've designed, defined so far. Now, this, uh, now we have everything we need to compute the entropy. So we, uh, we want to compute the entropy of this stochastic variable S here. So we've basically just used the uh, uh, formula that we had in the definition on the previous slide and put in uh, these things. So we have two uh, elements, uh, heads or tails, so that means we will sum up two terms. So in the first case we have s equals two uh, heads here. Uh, so the probability of that happening multiplied by the logarithm of the same probability happening plus the uh, the other case where uh, it's uh, tails that come up, uh, so the other side of the coin, and it's the same probability multiplied by the logarithm of the same probability. And uh, if we just plug in these numbers, uh, we will get the logarithm of two, which is equal to one, which means that we get one bit. Uh, when we toss a coin. So this uh, makes sense intuitively too, because we know that, okay, we, uh, when we toss a coin, it's 50-50 chance. So one side is the zero and one side is the one, so we can perfectly represent it with a bit. So let's look at uh, another example then. So we have this uh, stochastic variable D, which is uh, the role of a die. And the possible outputs uh, that we can have are, yeah, the, the face of the die, so one, two, three, four, five, and six. So it's a normal die. And we also have the, the probabilities that we normally assume for a die that it's equal probability for each side. So uh, no matter what we, uh, which side turns up, it's uh, one sixth uh, probability that it happens. Now we can compute the, the entropy of the die roll, so the, the stochastic variable D here. So we basically just uh, plug in the formula that we had on the first page. And so for every possible output, yeah, we sum the probability of that output happening multiplied by the logarithm of the same output happening. And if we put in the numbers, uh, we see that it's the logarithm of six that happens, which is roughly 2.585. So uh, we can see here that uh, there is more room for 
choice or uncertainty uh, when rolling a die than uh, tossing a coin. Uh, so we also need more bits to store uh, the result. So in, in general, rolling a die produces more information than a coin toss. And this makes intuitive sense because yeah, of course it's easier to guess if there are two out, uh, possible outcomes as in tossing a, a coin, so it's 50-50% chance. Whereas guessing the roll of a die is much more difficult because you have six options and each are equally probable. Uh, so let's let's continue to to play with this uh, this last example of the die and uh, modify the die a bit. So we'll skew it a bit. Now we we have the stochastic variable d prime uh, taking values from d. So uh, now we since in a lot of these uh, die rolling games it's uh, advantages to get the six then we want to construct a die where this happens a lot. So say that we change the probability of that happening to nine over 10 here. So 90% chance uh, of this happening. And then we, uh, we let the others happen uniformly uh, over the last 10%. Uh, now this, if we, if we now uh, plug in uh, these numbers into the, the definition uh, of uh, computing the entropy, we see that uh, we get nine over 10 times the logarithm of nine over 10 plus uh, the other uh, dice here. And uh, if we uh, continue to, to calculate the exact number, we will get something like 0 0.701. Um, now, uh, now we can note that uh, this die is actually much easier to predict than uh, tossing a coin actually, because it produces less than one bit uh, of entropy here. Uh, so now we have a concrete value of how easy this die is to predict and how much uh, information it actually produces. And uh, this means that if you if you want to generate uh, random bits, uh, which is common that we want to do in cryptography, then uh, tossing a coin produces more uh, randomness than rolling this modified die. On the other hand, rolling a normal die produces more uh, random bits than uh, tossing a coin. So if you want to generate random bits faster, then rolling a die is much better because then we have to roll the die fewer times uh, than tossing the coin to produce uh, more bits. So as, uh, as we noted, the, this die is much easier to predict. It produces much less information, much less than a coin cause actually and thus it re requires less data for storage and, and so on, as we said. Now, uh, that's the basic concept of, of Shannon entropy. So let's look at some properties that we get. Uh, so first we, we need the definition, uh, and that's the definition of a concave function because we'll, we'll use this uh, later. So basically a concave function is a function from the real numbers to the real numbers and it has the property that if you have a number t here which uh, uh, varies from, from which is a number between uh, 0 and 1 and you multiply t to f of x plus uh, 1 minus t times f of y then we have that this is less than or equal to f of t multiplied by two by x plus one minus t multiplied by y. So basically what we did here was uh, move in the t's inside uh, the f. So instead of multiplying f of x, we multiply uh, x directly by t and then we take f of that. Uh, so we can move in uh, this t. And if this property holds, then the function f is concave. 
uh, and if we have uh, strict inequality, so strictly less than here, then we say that say that f is strictly concave. And we have we have a function that you are you should be familiar with, uh, which is strictly concave, and that's the logarithm function. So the logarithm from from r uh, to r here. So basically, if we plot the graph for the logarithm, uh, we see that uh, it forms uh, a concave shape here. So basically what it says is that we can uh, make a line between any two points and it will not cross the line here in between. Uh, so that's, that's what the con concave and concavity uh, property says. Now this is uh, interesting in the case of entropy because uh, the probabilities behave just like the t that we had there. And we have a sum uh, just like uh, we did for, for the uh, concavity there. So we have a theorem which is called Jensen's inequality, which uh, uh, shows that if you have a concave function uh, f, then, uh, and you have uh, a few uh, coefficients, a1, a2, up to a n, and they sum up to one. Uh, in the case of uh, our example before, uh, with t, we had two coefficients. So we had t and one minus t, uh, which sum up to one. Uh, if we have these properties, then, we can basically do this. So if we have the sum where the coefficients are outside uh, the function here, then that will be less than or equal to uh, having f uh, outside and then summing uh, on the inside here. So you, you see that we, uh, we move the sum and a here inside f or move the f out, uh, outside of the sum. So if we have a concave function, we can do this. So that's basically what Jensen's inequality says. And uh, this allows us to say something about uh, uh, Shannon entropy, because this is the case. So say that we have a stochastic variable x here with a probability distribution uh, of this. So the probability distribution uh, in the case of uh, our previous examples, was the, the probability of each uh, outcome. Uh, so that's basically what we have here. And what this theorem says that, uh, it says that the entropy of this stochastic variable x will always be less than or equal to the logarithm of n, and n was the number uh, of outputs here. Uh, so in the case of the rolling the die, we had six possible outcomes because we had six sides on the die. And for the point cost, we had uh, two, uh, two possible outcomes since there are two sides of the coin. And uh, as you remember from the perfect uh, coin and the perfect die, the, what we got was actually the logarithm of two for, uh, for tossing the coin and logarithm of six for rolling the die. And then, uh, for the skewed die, we had uh, we had something that was less than the logarithm of six because it uh, was it was much less actually less than logarithm of two. Um, furthermore, this theorem says that we will have equality here, so uh, the entropy is equal to the logarithm of n if we have a uniform the uniform probability distribution. That means that uh, each probability here is one over n. And uh, the reason this uh, works is basically the proof applies Jensen's inequality. So we have uh, the probability, uh, the, the entropy uh, of the stochastic variable x, which is equal to uh, this is uh, the formula we have for from the definition of uh, Shannon entropy. And then we can uh, rewrite it a bit. So we remove this minus sign here uh, by flipping uh, this one to make it one over uh, P. And uh, this is of course, according to uh, Jensen's inequality, 
less than if we break out the logarithm here. So uh, the logarithm is the concave function. The Jensen's inequality said that we could move it outside here, uh, which is what we do here. And then inside we have this sum, and we know that uh, pi multiplied by one over pi, that's one. And uh, we have n items, so summing up uh, n ones, that's n. Uh, so this is equal to the logarithm of n. Now we can uh, get a few other uh, interesting results from this. So we have this corollary uh, that the uh, entropy of a stochastic variable x is zero uh, if and only if the probability of uh, uh, some output is equal to one and zero for any other output. This means that there is only one output, uh, one possible output for this stochastic variable. Uh, and uh, in that case, it has zero entropy because it's very easy to predict. And so there is no randomness in there because every time it will be uh, that particular value. And the proof is uh, quite simple. If uh, the probability of uh, x being equal to small x here is one, then n is equal to one, and thus the probability, the, the entropy of x is log n, which is zero. So a logarithm of one is uh, zero. And on the other hand, uh, if we have uh, the entropy of x being equal to zero, uh, then the entropy uh, must be less than or equal to the logarithm of n. And the only case uh, we have there is uh, when n is equal to one. So then we get zero. Uh, we also have another, uh, another theorem, a lemma, uh, where we have two stochastic variables. And uh, so we have a stochastic variable x and we have a stochastic variable y. And uh, then the joint entropy of these two is less than or equal to the entropy of x plus the entropy of y. Uh, and this is, uh, we have equality uh, if and only if uh, x and y are independent. Uh, so this means that uh, if we uh, roll uh, a die and we make a do make a toyn cos, uh, then uh, we can uh, combine them and, and just simply add their entropy. So if x is the toyn cos and a uh, toyn uh, coin toss, and uh, y is the the roll of the die, then uh, we can get the total entropy by summing these up. Uh, because these two events are uh, independent. Now, same as there is conditional probability, we can also have conditional entropy. Uh, so this is uh, defined as follows, and it, uh, it follows quite straightforward from the definition of uh, conditional probability. Uh, so the thing that we get here is basically uh, if we have uh, the entropy of y given x uh, this is the uncertainty left in y if we uh, already see x so that is uh, what is uh, not already revealed by x about y so there is a theorem uh, saying then that the, the joint entropy of x and y is perfectly equal to the entropy of x plus the entropy of y given x. So seen uh, as this Venn diagram, uh, we have the entropy of uh, x here, which is the, uh, the red circle. And uh, then we have uh, the entropy of edge uh, given uh, the en entropy of y given x uh, is the green area here. So here you can easily see 
why uh, you cannot have uh, the entropy of x plus the entropy of y because this then we would count uh, this area in the middle twice uh, so it would be too large so that's why uh, we need to do it like this instead uh, we have some other uh, corollaries. So for instance, we have the entropy of x given y is less than or equal to uh, the entropy of x, obviously, since, um, since uh, revealing, if uh, y reveals any information about x, uh, the entropy will be reduced. And if uh, y doesn't reveal any information about x at all, so it's independent uh, from x, uh, then uh, the entropy of x given y is still the, the entropy of x. Uh, so that's, that's basically what the second uh, corollary is saying here, that if they are independent, uh, then you have an equality here, because then y doesn't affect x at all. Now, uh, the last part that we are going to cover is uh, information gain. Uh, so this uh, this means that we, if we know some information and we we are something is revealed to us, uh, how much information did we actually learn? So let U here be the set of possible outcomes, and then we have uh, the probability of a particular outcome denoted as PU. So if the outcome is uh, small U here then the probability of that happening is PU here. Uh, now we learn that some unknown outcome uh, is in a set A here, which is a subset of U. So it's not, uh, not only one uh, outcome, but we, we learn that it's uh, one of a few uh, possible outcomes. Uh, then we define the information gain as uh, the gain uh, of A uh, given U uh, as follows. So it's the logarithm of uh, one over the probability of the uh, probability of the, the set uh, A occurring. Now let's, uh, let's look at one example uh, to, to make this uh, more easy to grasp. So we look at the roll of a die again. So someone rolls a die and we should guess the result. So uh, as we know, we, we have this perfect uh, die as we're used to. So it's one over six uh, to guess it correctly. So it's uniform probability. Now we learn that, so someone rolls the die and uh, then uh, hide it from us. So we don't see the, the output. And then they tell us that it shows an even number. Now, this reveals something uh, to us because now if we know it's an even number, it's kind of stupid to uh, guess uh, that the die shows one, three, or uh, uh, one, three, or five. So we have learned uh, some information. Uh, the question is how much we have learned. And if we use the definition that we saw on the uh, page before, uh, on the slide before, then, and, and simply plug in these probabilities, uh, the, the logarithm of uh, this event happening is uh, one over six for uh, it showing two, for showing uh, four and then for showing six. So we can compute this and find that we have uh, learned one bit of information. And that makes sense because we have uh, actually removed uh, half of the options uh, that uh, we need to guess. This means that it remains uh, 1.58 uh, bits of entropy. So if you remember, the original uh, role was 2.58. So we simply remove this uh, one bit that uh, we have learned. So that's how much uh, randomness remains uh, from this. Now, if we actually uh, look at it from the, the other way, 
if we say that we have a die which has only these sides and we roll it, then if we compute the entropy, uh, then we see that we get uh, exactly 1.58. So this is two ways of computing uh, the same thing. So we, we see that the, the information gain here is consistent with what we learned before. Now, uh, let's uh, look at this die uh, again. And instead of learning that it was showing an even number, we learned that it's uh, not showing uh, five or six. So this means that the outputs uh, must be uh, one, two, three, or four. Uh, so the information uh, that uh, we gained was uh, 0 0.58 uh, bits. So that was everything uh, for this time. Thanks a lot.